Toodle Pip, hello. And in this video, we are going to be going over scrape eye. So um, in previous videos, we've used mainly beautiful soup to scrape websites, but this time we're going to be using scrape eye. Now, what is scrape eye? Is it better than beautiful soup? Why are we going to be doing this when we've we've been getting on fine with beautiful soup? Um, well, what scrape eye is? It's a it's more of a framework. It's more of a complete package than beautiful soup. Uh, it allows us to not only download the data but clean the data and save the data. Um, it's better, it can be used to create more scalable approaches to web scraping. Um, it's a different way of doing things, so we'll go through it. We're gonna try and keep this as simple as possible as usual. So we're just gonna scrape one website and get some data, and we're gonna throw it into a JSON file so you can see how easy it is with ScrapeI. Um, there are another uh, load of benefits you get with ScrapeEye. So we have things like inbuilt error handling. Um, when you're scraping websites, you'll often find that uh, you don't actually get the website to come back. The request is malformed. There's something wrong. The, um, the server blocks your request. And these sort of things have to be handled with errors, you know, try catch blocks and what have you. But ScrapeEye has its inbuilt error handling, which makes this a little bit easier. Uh, it also has things like um, it can decouple the logic of the scraper and handling the data um, and the actual selection of the elements, which is really nice. Um, but for like I say, for this video, we're going to go through one way of doing it. We're going to show you a really small bit of scrape eye and we'll continue more in other videos. Uh, so this is just to get you all started. So let's have a look at the website we're going to be scraping. That website is this, advn.com. Uh, uh, we're specifically going to be looking at the HSBC share chat page. So this is where people have come on and they said, I want to say some things about the HSBC shares. Uh, and they've come along and they've said some stuff. Um, this is a common sort of thing for people to scrape because they could do things like sentiment analysis with this data. Um, and we're going to look at this. So and we're going to get the chat. So we're going to get what someone said and who said it. We're going to throw that into a JSON file. Um, there are about 8,000 messages. There's 355 pages for us to get. So uh, let's get started. Okay, going over to a terminal. The first thing you're going to need to do is actually install ScrapeEye. So with that, you just do pip install ScrapeEye. I've already installed it, so it would be a waste of time me pressing enter there. But that's how you install it. Really simple. Um, it's also slightly different to how we've done things before. So what we're going to do this time is we're going to say scrape I uh, generate project or create project start project. That was what I was trying to think of. There we go. Start project. We're going to call our project stocks like that. Oh, look at that. It's created a little project for us. Well, we can LS. We've got a new folder CD into the folder. Um, and this is where we're going to be running our script from. It's not where our script is actually going to go though. So it's something slightly weird here. So there's another folder called stocks here. In here we have some stuff. We want to put our script in the folder called spiders. At the moment we just have an init.py and a pycache. So that's where our script's going to go. Coming back. So we're back in where we're going to be running our um, script from. It's going to be run slightly differently, but we'll get to that when we get to that. So let's start off by creating it. Um, in this case, we're going to say stocks, stock spiders. I've already forgotten the directory. We're going to call it, uh, you know, hsbc.py. That'll work. Okay. So what do we need to do? Well, the very first thing we need to do is import scrapeI. Like I say, it's a complete package, so we didn't need to import anything else. Next thing we need to do, we need to get the URL. So let's say uh, HSBC, whoa. And we're gonna pass in the URL. It's going to be this one here. Okay. So there we go. Uh, we also want to actually, how do we get the page? That's a point, how do we get the page? Uh, look at the page, so click on a page got all this so what we need to get here is just the question mark and page equals that's what we need to get so question mark page equals that's going to allow us to specifically say what page we want to go to next we're going to create a class we'll call it stock spider pass in scrape eye 
dot spider like this. Whoops. There you go. Uh, we'll give it a name. This is how we're going to refer to our uh, spider. Like I say, this is going to be the way we run it's different than how we've run things in the past. We're not going to be running um, HS Python HSBC Pi. We're going to be running uh, Scrapy. We'll get to that, and then we're going to pass in our name, and the name is where we get it from here. So that's the name of our spider. That's how we run it. So we could have many things that use the same class that have different names. Okay. Uh, next, we want to create a method called start requests. All that's going to pass in is the self. So there we go. Start request. Pass in the self. Next, we're going to do something ever so slightly inefficient, but just so we can read the code a little bit easier. Um, you don't have to do it this way, but I'm just going to do it this way to keep things easy to read. So first, we want to create an array of URLs, and we're going to do this in a lovely Pythonic way. We are going to create an array like this, square brackets. Inside the array, we're going to pass in that HSBC URL. We're going to concatenate that with uh, the string of i. Well, what's i, Shane? Well, we're going to do a for loop. It's going to be a one-line for loop. It's going to be lovely. Say so for i in range. Um, three. Oh yes, this is the point. Um, this website, the chat pages go backwards. Really weird. No other website I've ever seen ever does this. It's really odd. Normally, the most recent page will be page one, and we would just carry on going to page, you know, three hundred. But no, we're starting on page three hundred and fifty-five here, and we're going all the way back to page one. So let's um, do that. Slightly weird, like I say. Um, also, we're not going to consider um, the latest page, so we're not going to say, oh, how do we work out what the latest page is? Because we could do that, but it means doing a bit more scraping than is necessary in this video just to give you the basic gist of Scrapey. Okay, so we're going to do uh, 355, that was the latest page. We're going to go to 0, and we're going to do so in increments of minus 1, like that. Lovely bit of code there, creates the whole array in one, one little line. Then we're going to iterate through those URLs, so like this. And we're going to use the word, the keyword yield. Now the keyword yield is quite interesting because what it does is it um, essentially suspends the current execution, passes a value back up the chain of calls. That can do something with it and then it can carry on from the same position and carry on doing what it's doing. Slight, it's like return, but not really. Because um, return actually sort of says, all right, stop doing what you're doing, we'll return the value. Yield's slightly different. It's sort of passing the value backwards and saying, all right, let's continue. Weird explanation of yield, but there we are. So then we're going to pass in um, to a scrape by request, callback and the URL. So the callback is going to be a method we haven't created yet. We're going to call it self.parse. Well, it just should be called parse, but it's part of this class. So we use the dot self reference. Notice here, request. Well, Scrapey has requests inbuilt, like I said, so we don't have to uh, actually import the requests module here. And next, we'll create a new method. Like I say, it's going to be called parse. And we'll pass in self, and we'll also pass in a response. Where's the response coming from? Or well, the response? Oh my God! Is that? Does that? That does not look like I spelt response right. Response. Wow. That was that was that was shocking even for me. The response is coming from here. So essentially, what this is doing is saying, okay, take the value and pass it to the pass uh, method. Next, we are going to use another for loop. This time, we're going to start iterating through the elements, which of course we have to figure out what we want to do. But obviously, we know. That there's a table involved we know that there are many of the elements we want to get so we know there's going to be a for loop so let's look now how do we figure out how do we get those elements that we want to scrape so we're going to be scraping just the subject or the chat message here for some reason it's calling it the subject and we're also only going to want to get the um, actual name of the author so let's have a look at how we do that well first thing right click inspect the element the reason we do right click inspect as opposed to doing like uh, command alt j on a mac or f12 on windows is because this will bring up specifically the element we just clicked on just much quicker 
So if we have a look down here, I think I can make this bigger for you. I can make this bigger, wow. Okay, we are looking at a table of table class table element. We are looking at a table body that doesn't have a class. We're looking at a first row that we should probably ignore. We are looking at then a whole load of rows, yeah, as you expect. So it's TR, table row. One has a class even, one has the class odd. Um, the reason for that is so that they can do different colors on even and odd rows. Um, but for scraping, it does make things a little bit weird, but we don't actually have to use that. So how do we get to the subject? Well, we can click into this one. Look at the second one, because if we look over here, we've got, these are TD. So each one of these little things here is a TD, that's table cell. Second one, and the one that's being highlighted currently, that is the one we're looking for. And we have just got, well, this is a link. It's got a link that's got the class uh, message style. Um, so we're going to want to get the text from there. If I expand that, you can see we've just got the string that we want. So uh, what do we need to do? Well, we need to get the message class of the link A. Well, we can do that pretty easy. So just hold that in memory for a moment. And we'll have a look at how do we get the author. So look at the third one. That's the author. Oh, this is interesting. We've got two links. Um, one of them has the text of the name. The other one has nothing of interest as look as far as it sees. Oh, yeah, that has the image. Um, so I'm actually going to show you a slightly different way of doing this. One way we could do this is we could just like we could find this um, using just get the third um, table cell of any row, and then take the second link and just say get me the text. But we could also use regular expressions, which we haven't done so far. Um, so we're going to do that instead. A little bit of fun. You don't have to do it that way. But let's let's go and do that now. So we're going back. And in our pass, we're going to create a for loop with a lovely zip. So we're going to say for chat and then author in zip. So zip's a great command because what it does is it takes two arrays and puts them together and then you can get you can sort of iterate through them simultaneously. Wonderful. So say response, because we're getting the response object here. We want to say .css. Um, and for the first one, we wanted to get the link that was of class message style. Like that. And we also want to get the text of it. Like this. Um, and then we can say get all. That's going to return us an array of everything we want to get. Um, let's just double check actually that message style is only, really only there like once. Um, I'm, sh I'm sure we'll soon see problems, but I, inspecting this before I made this video, it didn't look like there was the element message style anywhere. So we should be fine just calling message style. Um, another thing you can notice that you will get elements that do have the same class. Um, and in that case, Whenever you call get, so you can call there's a there's two methods you can call the there's get and there's get all. There's also extract and extract first. Um, they aren't recommended that you use those anymore. There's nothing particularly wrong with them. It's just that Scrapey says that their new methods get and get all just mean it's easier to read the code. Um, extract is equal to get all and extract first is equal to get. Um, so yeah, if you say get on a method, it's only going to get the very first element it finds. So in this case, it would find the table element and it would only get this one. Um, whereas the one we want to get is actually a table of table element. Well, these are divs, so we could actually further filter that out. Um, so yeah, let's, let's go ahead and get the author. So we've got the comma because we're going to then pass in a second um, array which we're going to get by saying response CSS table dot table element so we're just going to filter that table element out in one go um, we're going to call CSS again um, so if we don't call get on the the on the method here we have basically just still got an element that we can play with so say dot CSS and we are going to say what was it TD nth of type, and it was the third one, right? 
So I'm going to say TD events type 3. Like that. That'll get us the third one. For this one here, we could have also done um, TD event type 2, and then we could have filtered again on um, message A style. So we could have done TD event type 2 there, and then at the end of it, we could have done um, CSS A message style. You know, if we were finding that this was present in many places in the HTML document. Because it's only in the table, we don't actually need to do that, so we're fine doing this the way we're doing it. Okay, so that looks about right. We're not going to call get all on this last one here. The reason for that is because we're going to do some additional um, playing with it. We're going to be calling um, the regular expression on it in a second. So we need to close the zip colon and let's go into the actual the actual gubbins of the for loop so yield we're going to yield a dictionary or yeah a dictionary like that again how do we do that well we're going to say what we're we going to put in there sorry we're going to put in a chat message and that's just going to be equal to chat real simple because the chat um, object we've got here is just the text so we've said here, get all, and obviously we're iterating through it. We're only going to have the, the one chat message. So this is going to be, when it says get all, we're going to get an array of just strings of the chat messages. So each time we go through it, we've only got the chat, so we don't need to do anything else. To get the author, like I said, we're going to have a bit of fun here. We're going to do some regex. So pass in the author. Now, author's not filtered yet. We need to actually get the text. So looking back... Over here, um, we'll look at the this thing here. Do, 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 inspect, and we can see that we could just get the second link. So right now, it, we could just say um, CSS a dot find. Oh, sorry, get all, and then we could just say one because we're starting at zero. So get the first, get the second one by calling one. And that would be totally fine. We could do that, or it would have to do actually um, a colon colon text, and that will get the text. But we can also do it in a fun little way, and we can do some regex. So let's do that. So what we're going to get? Well, we're going to look for uh, anywhere that says profile forward slash, and then we want to get everything up to this last little um, speech mark, quote sign, whatever you want to call it, because they're, they're equal in both of these. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, now okay uh, going over we're going to say author dot re like I say open the parentheses type r open the quotes type in profile forward slash then we want to say get me everything we also probably want to do uh, backslash there so we can escape out the forward slash we want to say square brackets hat symbol, quotes, close the square brackets, plus, and then we just want to say, uh, close that little string, close the parentheses. So what we're saying here is get me everything. Um, so get find profile, the forward slash, get me everything up to those quote marks and save that. Um, the reason we're gonna say get, get the profile is because we wanna we know that that's quite unique, so we can say we're getting everything here. Then we're going to get this tame trader. Then what we're going to do is going to take the profile out of the string, and we'll just return the actual um, username. So let's go ahead and do that. So we've got right now we've got the string. We've actually got um, a number of strings because this is matched on this twice as well because there are two instances it's going to find because we're looking within this element right now it's going to find two of them so we're just going to say pick me the first one say dot split pass in profile forward slash and then minus one to get the string we want which is the last one so it's just going to have the author's name there so this looks all good at the moment we're going to write that to the file and then we're going to go ahead and run it. Um, I must show you one thing as well before, uh, that's a scrape by shell. This is really great if you want to actually figure out what elements you can try and find. 
So if we say, uh, we'll find the, we'll get the page. So we'll take the page. So you can type in scrape ice shell, double quotes, and pass in the uh, page name here. This should work if I take out these backslashes that have somehow got in there. There we go. And we've just loaded the scrape ice shell. What it's done is you just scrape that page for us. And we can take the response object that we've just been playing with and we can see what it returns. So enter and we see that we get 200. So 200 is the response code. That means 200 means everything's all tickety boot. It's all good. So let's have a look what we can do with this. So we can say response um, and we'll say table dot table element like that. And if I just pass in a text like that and I say get we can see we actually get some stuff back, which is uh, useful if you want to sort of practice and double check that what you're putting in your code is going to work before actually putting it in your code. So just a little thing there, we can see, ah, oh, look, this is what we've returned. We can see we've got all the HTML um, within that element by typing what I just typed. So we can then put that in our code knowing it's going to work. Just a little thing there that you might want to look at when you're using Scrapey. Uh, so the next thing we can do is actually run it. So normally you'd do something like, we'd say Python, um, HSBC, so on and so forth. Um, but we're not going to do that. What we're going to do, make sure that we're in the directory that has this CFG file. So remember that where our file actually is, it's in the uh, stocks forward slash spider. And then it's over here. So it's not in the same directory we're currently in. But what we're going to run is we're going to run scrapey. We're going to run scroll. We're going to then say stocks. Remember, that's the name that we passed in. If you remember, we passed in the name stocks. And then we're going to say, well, what the output is. So uh, minus O. We want to give it an output of stock chat dot JSON. So what we're going to expect here is we're going to get that dictionary of all of those websites we wanted to, all of the chat objects we wanted to get uh, in this one JSON file. Really simple, really quick to do. So at the moment, you can see in the, that directory, we actually have nothing apart from the folder and this little CFG file. So if I press enter, it's going to run. Looks like it's all running OK. It's running quite quickly. One of the things, the things you might struggle to see here, but it's actually calling um, the times it's giving. Uh, it's giving us the same time for some multiple elements, meaning that it's doing it asynchronously. It's doing them, some of them at the same time which is one of the benefits of using scrape it's why that yield function that yield keyword we were using it's one of the reasons that's so good so i'm going to let this run a second and we're going to see what's going to happen when this uh, finishes okay and we can see that this is finished correctly so if i run ls again and see what happens um to our folder oh we've got this new little file here called stockchat.json um, so what we can do let's have a look at how many lines there are I'm expecting there to be about 8,000 odd lines because remember there were 8,000 odd chat objects um, on the website so we say uh, WC minus L and then we'll pass in star JSON like that yeah 8,000 so if we open the file it might look a bit chaotic because it's not going to be formatted correctly but oh well and we can see here what we have is we've got a chat message. Okay, there's one chat message and it's also got the author correctly. So we'll come back to the website and just check that that's right. Monte, at least you have the decency, da 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 da. And then that's by Thames Trader. And look, you can see that's that's correct there. And we can have a look at the next one. Monty Hedge, well, that's the next one as well. So we can see this has worked really well. Um, so like I say, slightly differently to um, how we would use beautiful soup to scrape websites, but this is a slightly more scalable thing. We've created here a what's called a, a spider. That's what Scrapey has now. A spider is a, an automated bot that controls through many web pages uh, and scrape them along the way. Um, so it's a really we've just dipped our toes in the water with Scrapey. Um, so hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, as always, leave them below. I'll try and answer them all. Um, thank you very much for watching.